if we begin with the physical infrastructure in India, especially after independence. In this presentation, I will discuss the infrastructure development, uh, economic infrastructure development after 1950 uh, and to which has which has continued till 1990 because we are finding that 91 was the year of economic reforms in India. Majority of the economic reforms started in 1991. So we will have a separate discussion on the post economic reforms infrastructure growth in India. But prior to that, I would like to draw your attention on how uh, the post independent India has continued its uh, growth in infrastructure infrastructure field. Before discussing in detail uh, at the sector at, at the sectoral level, I will try to explain what, what is basically the importance of fiscal infrastructure. It is true that we have discussed enough uh, about the role of infrastructure in economic growth, but let me again recap before discussing the uh, different areas of infrastructure in India. Uh, as we are aware that fiscal infrastructure is, is directly concerned with needs of such production sectors like power, transport, telecommunication. And uh, this type of infra infrastructure is an integral part of development because it provides the basic services to the people and it really fulfills the need of the daily life of the people. So <clears throat> it is indeed important that uh, what type of fiscal infrastructure is going to develop uh, uh, in, in any country, in any economy. And uh, if you can just see here uh, that uh, these facilities uh, has the forward and backward linkage. If, if a economy is uh, adding uh, certain infrastructure, we have theoretically proved, uh, we have seen theoretically that how production possibility curve shift. If you will again remember one of my introductory lecture, you will find out that these infrastructure are helping the economy to, to move uh, to, to shift from the previous production possibility curve to the, to the rightward pr production possibility curve. And uh, uh, this movement, uh, this shift is not possible without having the infrastructure facilities developed in any economy. At the same time, if the facilities of infrastructure is deteriorating, if the existing roads are not properly maintained if the existing flyovers are not properly maintained in the economy, if the railway tracks are not being maintained, uh, if the ports and airports are not really well taken care, then it has the, big, it has the backward impact on the economic group, growth process and the, this production possibility curve uh, which, uh, which, uh, which we can see it here, uh, uh, which, which, which you can see it here, uh, it cannot be really uh, it cannot really move from uh, it cannot really move from it cannot really shift from the previous level to the new level. So uh, here uh, we can see this is the first PPC uh, this is the second production possibility curve and the second pos production possibility curve shows that how uh, <clears throat> the new uh, uh, new level of infrastructure has moved the country's possibility. Suppose production possibility curve is the curve uh, which shows the country's production possibility uh, between two goods. Uh, in in uh, suppose uh, on OX axis we have the possibility of producing food grain, food item, or food grain, and uh, on O axis we have the production possibility of computer. Uh, we can see here that if, if the economy is shifting from uh, PC1 to the PC2 level, it means that economy is in the po position to produce more output. So if you can just connect uh, this line, uh, uh, this is the X1 production of uh, food grain and uh, C1 production of computer. And if, if, uh, uh, if the country is really moving from this, uh, this curve uh, from, from PPC uh, 1 to PPC 2, uh, any point on, on this particular curve is showing us that there is really more production of food grain X2 and more production of 
computer. This has not happened without having proper adjustment in the uh, uh, proper, uh, proper growth of the uh, physical infrastructure in the economy. So, let us come back to the, uh, to the discussion which we are having that uh, physical infrastructure is really uh, uh, helpful in, in the production of, uh, in the further production of the economy. Because it, improve, it, it really improves the competitiveness, supports uh, the productive sectors, generates high productivity and leads to economic growth in a country. The total investment in infrastructure which includes roads, railway, ports, airports, electricity, te telecommunication, oil and gas pipelines and irrig irrigation is estimated to have a, a, a in increased uh, return uh, uh, because whatever, whatever expenditure a country is having really uh, those investment, those expenditure on these items are really giving us more increased way of return uh, so that this fiscal infrastructure growth is really important for any country. Given this background, let me start the discussion on what was really the uh, contribution of uh, government in the, uh, in the development of infrastructure. Uh, because uh, after independence in 1950-51, uh, uh, we thought that, India thought that uh, there is a need to have the infrastructure development. But the entire development process was having a different set of policy argument and that was basically the socialistic pattern of the society. The Prime Minister, uh, then Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was more convinced, convinced with the socialistic model of governance in which a state has to play a very prominent role. So, entire production mechanism was, was basically uh, uh, completely dependent on the role of the public expenditure and public sector really played a very dominant and very dynamic role in building physical infrastructure in India in the beginning of the uh, planning in India or uh, we can say the entire planning period uh, starting from 1951 to till, till the end of the uh, planning commission. We are finding that uh, it, was, uh, it was really, uh, really concerned about the public ex expenditure uh, uh, for the infrastructure development. Apart from the recent movement where we were started looking for the public private partnership and the private entry in the, in the infrastructure development. But for uh, till 1990, India was one of the economy in, in the world which were more uh, uh, dependent on the public expenditure for infrastructure development because private parties within the country and uh, private parties outside the country were not allowed to really uh, have such development, uh, uh, to have such participation in the infrastructure development. Uh, government were really having uh, different restrictions on the private entry in the infrastructure projects. And that way, we found that uh, India's infrastructure development from 1950 to 1990 was basically the matter of uh, public uh, expenditure and uh, really the government control. So, uh, if we can again see the role of the government in and its impact on the infrastructure, uh, India had a very long inning of public sector involvement in infrastructure development and the restriction on the entry of private investment was really affecting the overall growth of the economic and social infrastructure. So, the fiscal infrastructure started facing the problem of delivery and efficiency after the independence. It was true uh, that uh, public expenditure was, uh, was continued in Indian Railway. Uh, public expenditure was continued in, uh, uh, in uh, airways, in ports, in roads. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it was just because uh, the huge investment of the public sector and uh, there were so many uh, political interference in such investment, in such expenditures. Uh, uh, and uh, the fact was that uh, India was not uh, really having uh, different resources to allow uh, such expenditures, somehow we were dependent on the assistance from the international agencies and, and the loan from the international agencies for the further development of infrastructure. Uh, and uh, uh, government were taking loan from the different agencies for such development. And uh, it would have been the, uh, it would have been an opportunity to allow the private parties within the country and outside the country 
to become the partner in the public uh, to become the partner in the infrastructure growth which is happening today but it has not happened during 1950 to 1990 which was one of the golden era for developing such infrastructure and uh, uh, we have seen that uh, even the partition of the country uh, has really derailed the infrastructure development process soon after the after the independence so if one can see just uh, uh, the background of the infrastructure in, in india india had a very basic infrastructure development during the colonial period but the basic infrastructure such as railways ports water transport post and telegraph services were really uh, developed uh, not by not by the uh, by the government after post independence but by the britishers before the post independence and the famed uh, uh, railway network needed up uh, needed up gradation expansion and the public orientation the indian road network was only uh, a, a very small million kilometer in in 1950 Uh, uh, 1951, uh, which has to be extended, uh, which was supposed to be extended, and the government tried to really uh, develop the road uh, networks. Uh, here, in this uh, uh, statistics, we can see here the post-partition division of the railway infrastructure. Uh, in terms of locomotive, uh, we had 7,248 passenger coaches. We had uh, 20,166 coaches. goods wagons were 210099 where the kilometers of uh, uh, railway kilo, uh, lines were 54376 uh, uh, if uh, after after the partition we had to uh, we had to also uh, uh, divide the indian railway infrastructure with pakistan and then the locomotives in pakistan at that time uh, was 1339 passenger coaches 4280 uh, goods wagons 40221 and the rail line kilometers were 11133 so this shows the country uh, which had uh, which had the uh, more uh, bigger size of the rail line more uh, big number of locomotives uh, large number of passenger coaches has again the distribution or divi division of the railway infrastructure that was really a setback for india indian railway after the partition uh, uh, after independence we find out that the indian railway were reintegrated and uh, brought under the railway board for better management uh, chitranjan locomotive works was established in 1949 to produce steam locomotives and an agreement was signed with swiss car and elevator company of the switzerland integral coach factory in perambur was established in madras in 1953 and the rapid pace of electrification was under underwent during 1960 to 69 uh, first rajdhani express was introduced on march 3rd 1969 between havra and new delhi and 3500 route kilometers were electrified till 1970s during 80 to 1990 about 4500 route kilometers of track was also electrified so this shows that even after independence due to the public expenditure we had reached to the new heights in in the in terms of uh, railway networks and railway infrastructure and uh, this development cannot be ignored as a part of the development in the post independence india in terms of adding the kilometers uh, adding the uh, adding the uh, number of trains adding the other facilities such as having the uh, integrated coach factory and uh, uh, locomotive works uh, we can uh, say here uh, that uh, not only the railway but also we have seen the progress of road networks in terms of national highway uh, which was uh, in 1950 51 only 22 uh, it has grown to 24 in 60 61 and by 1990 91 uh, we had 34 national highways at the same time we had a state highways which was 52 in 1950 51 only 45 within 10 years the state highways has increased from 45 to 62 again uh, in 1970 71 a state highway has increased from the previous level of 62 to 70 by 1980 81 
the state highway has increased from the previous level of 70 to 95 by 1990-91 we found that it was 127 state highways. In terms of other roads we are having 333 other roads available uh, by 1950-51 with some addition it has went to the level of 429 in 1960-61 uh, by 1970-71 it reached to the level of 821. Uh, again by 8081 uh, 1352 other roads were added and by 1991 we found that 2166 60, 60, other road, roads were added. So, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, in terms of national highways uh, we have uh, increased in terms of a state highway we have increased threefold. Uh, in terms of other roads also we have increased by 6 to 7 fold and this shows that in the post independence era in terms of road network India had new heights to achieve. In, in case of airways uh, if we will see the uh, airways uh, infrastructure development after the independence civil aviation was in war torn condition with lack of basic infrastructure facilities. Runways were fit for only a small medium sized aircrafts. Eight air transport companies were operational in India at the time of independence. These include Tata Airlines, Indian National Airways, Air Service of India, Deccan Airways, Ambika Airways, Bharti Airways and Mystery Airways. An agreement was signed by Air India with the government for the operation of international service under the name Air India International Limited in 1948. So, soon after the independence we found that uh, there was some movement to have the international service in the name of Air India uh, which was well supported by the government of India. So, civil helicopter services were started in 1953 in the country DGCA remained the authority for civil aviation activities in India till 1970s. So, the international airport authority of India was also established in 1972 as one of the authority to take care of the activities related to the airway, airways. The national airport authority was constituted in 1986 and uh, till 1990 the focus was to develop to uh, was to have the development of only four international airport Delhi, Mumbai, Bombay, Calcutta and Madras. Because these four uh, uh, cities were also developed uh, previously in terms of infrastructure by the Britishers and having the background of uh, previous development even after post development era we found that all these cities continued to get uh, infrastructure growth even by the public support by the public expenditure. And since Delhi was the capital uh, the political capital Mumbai was the financial capital Calcutta was the business capital and Madras was well connected uh, with the uh, with the uh, with uh, other three cities and also having the sea route these uh, uh, these uh, these cities were also developed properly in case of uh, in in terms of airways infrastructure if you see the waterways uh, infrastructure developed after post independence there were major five ports in india in 1951 uh, which has aggregate uh, traffic increased moderately during the first 25 years after independence from 20 million tons in 1950 to 67 million tons in 1971. So, uh, it was a moderate uh, increase in the traffic uh, especially in the waterways. Uh, crude oil and iron ore are the main commodities uh, handled by the ports. Indian shipping uh, had 59 vessels in 1947 which was increased to 65 in 1982. Cargo increased from 14 million tons in 1973-74 to 28 million tons in 1979 and 80. So, in case of waterways also we found that uh, there was a moderate infrastructure developed after the post independence and again credit goes to the expenditure made by the government. Uh, in terms of uh, electrification or electricity growth uh, we can see here 
that in 1947 the installed capacity in India was 1362 megawatt number of uh, village village electrified uh, uh, by 1950 is shown uh, around 3061 village uh, length of uh, uh, T and D lines were 29279 and per capita electricity consumption which was at the time of independence 16.3 has increased by 2 more points around 18.2. In 1956 we found that uh, the installed capacity of megawatt has increased from the previous level of 1713 megawatt in 1950 to 2886 megawatt. The number of villages electrified in 1956 was much improved from the 1950 level, but again it was really very small size in terms of having the number of villages in India at that time. But still 7294 villages is shown that is showing that soon after independence and soon after the first five year, year plan, uh, India achieved just a double, uh, uh, double uh, just two times increase in terms of the number of village electrification. In terms of length of T and D lines, we also found that uh, after uh, the first, at the time of first uh, five year plan completion, uh, India had a tremendous increase uh, in terms of T and D lines, which has increased, increased from 29,271 to 85,427. In terms of per capita consumption also, as a result of the uh, uh, development in electrification, uh, we had 30.9 kilowatt per uh, capita consumption, uh, KB, K, KWH consumption uh, after, after 1956. Compared to 1956, if one can see the 1961 data in terms of uh, per capita power consumption, we again reached to the new height and that was 45.9 uh, KWH. Uh, compared to 1947, this increase is uh, around uh, three times uh, compared to 1947 and this happened only in 13 years time. Uh, in terms of number of village electrified uh, in 1961, it crossed uh, 21,754 and this shows that compared to 1956, India had more village electrification on a very fast speed and it is around three times higher than the previous level of 1957, uh, 1956. If, you, if we, you, we see the uh, electrification and the per capita consumption uh, in 1966 compared to 1961, we again found that uh, in, in terms of installed capacity of megawatt in 1961 around 90,000 uh, 9027 megawatt capacity was installed while the number of villages uh, electrified was 45158. So compared to the previous uh, data, previous statistics of 1961 of the village electrification, we have much advanced uh, growth rate of 45158 and uh, it has impacted the per capita consumption of the electricity which has increased from the previous level of 45.9 in 1961 to 73.9 in 1966. If you can see the 1969 data in terms of installed capacity uh, which is uh, 12,957 uh, much ahead from the uh, 1966 data of, 90, uh, of uh, uh, 9,027 and uh, number of village electrified in 1969 is also 73,739 which has much bigger number than the 45,158 in 1966. In terms of per capita consumption also we are founding, we can found here that uh, uh, in terms of per capita consumption the statistics has increased from 73.9% in 90, uh, uh, 73.9 kWh in 1966 to, uh, to 97.9 almost around 98 kWh in 1969. So this progress has, has continued and if we can see the uh, again installed capacity of uh, 
uh, electricity in 1974 that has uh, 16,664 and in terms of per capita consumption 126.2 which is far uh, uh, better number than 98 kWh. In terms of village electrification also uh, around 1,56,729 village were electrified and this shows the progress in the in, in the 1974. Compared to 1974 in 1979 the number of village electrification has again uh, increased from 1,56,729 to 2,32,770 and the per capita consumption has also gone up from 126.2 level to 171.6 kWh level. By 1980 we found that number of village electrified is 2,49,799 and in terms of the per capita consumption it, it has gone to 172.4 uh, uh, within a year because we are comparing here from 1979 to 1980 we are not finding much impact in terms of per capita consumption increase in the per capita consumption and the number of village electrified. But uh, in 1985 uh, the statistics of per capita consumption has much uh, better result it has increased from the previous level of 172 to 222.7 kWh that is much advanced level of progress in uh, per capita consumption and at the same time we had 3,70,332 village electrified in 1985. By 1990 uh, we found here that the installed capacity in terms of megawatt has increased 63,636 uh, which is uh, much ahead data from 42,585 uh, megawatt and in terms of number of village electrified we are having 470,838 70, uh, village electrified and uh, the per capita consumption has increased from the previous level of 228 uh, kWh to 329 kWh. So, these uh, statistics show us that uh, from the initial level of, uh, of initial level of 3061 village electrified in 1950 now we have uh, a new statistics uh, of uh, a, a much better statistics of uh, village electrification and that is 470,838. And in terms of uh, per capita consumption we have uh, the 16.3 kW, kWh uh, condition of the per capita consumption in 1947 which has gone up to 329 kWh per capita consumption. Uh, these statistics cannot be really uh, ignored while, uh, uh, while we were started from the condition of uh, having the 1362 megawatt and the per capita consumption of 16.3 kWh in 1947. That shows that what type of electrification and what type of electric electricity infrastructure uh, India had uh, at the time of independence and what contribution uh, uh, Britishers has made for electrification in India. So, uh, certainly uh, in the in the in, in the uh, years uh, between 1950 to 1990 uh, there is a uh, much uh, much better development in electrification, but it is a fact that that electrification uh, is not really uh, giving us uh, a, a better result in terms of comparing the consumption of per capita consumption of electricity at the global level with the developed country or with the newly industrialized countries. So, to reach to that level uh, India needs more speedy electrification, more installed capacity of the uh, uh, more installed capacity of the uh, power production, electricity production, and uh, 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 it 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 happened. Uh, all credit goes to the public expenditure in in infrastructure sector. Not a single sector was really dependent uh, fully on the private sector, and. Uh, uh, basically, the in, in the entire journey, the private sector investment were basically uh, 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 not really not really 
uh, supported by the government. Government has not really allowed the private sector to join uh, varieties of sectors which we have discussed as a part of uh, as a part of the infrastructure, the physical infrastructure development after 1950. In case of telecommunication, we can see here that investment at the percentage of planned expenditure in the telecom sector uh, during six five year plans remained low between 1.4 and 2.7 percent. It however increased to 3.6 percent in the seventh five year plan uh, between 1985 and 90. So, this telecommunication growth was again the matter of public expenditure for more than five decades. This has turned India with a very low tele density in the world. One can see here the tele density in March, which was 0.02 percent, and total number of telephone connections was uh, 0 0.08 million, which has increased uh, by 1991 uh, 0.60 tele density, and the total number of telephone connections was also. 28.53 million. That again shows us a very low level of telecom penetration in India and a very low level of tele density uh, in India compared to other countries of the world, other developed and developing countries of the world. To sum up, the condition of infrastructure remained in a bad shape in India after the independence, uh, especially in case of telecommunication. We found that, and even in the electrification, rural electrification and per capita consumption. Whatever growth we are seeing, that growth uh, in, uh, compared to the other world economy, that growth is really very less. Uh, one of the prime reasons behind the backward infrastructure development was the involvement of the public sector and not allowing the private parties to enter uh, in infrastructure projects. So, there is thus the need of the private investment in infrastructure development, which was felt by 1990-91 that it will not be the the possible uh, outcome for the government to really develop the infrastructure as per the need and the hour of uh, as per the need and the uh, and the requirement of the uh, requirement of the general public uh, but uh, uh, but the previous developments show us that uh, india would have been a better economy if it would have been uh, allowed the private investment to join uh, but it, it may have been a proper uh, regulatory investment, a, a regula uh, investment through the regulatory uh, board or regulatory mechanism. Uh, that opportunity, missing that opportunity uh, has really made India uh, little backward in terms of infrastructure development. Maybe uh, uh, after discussing the uh, growth of social infrastructure in 1950 to 1990, we will again try to see that what happened in infrastructure growth after 1991, after the economic reforms process in our, uh, in our next few lectures. Thank you.